Hey guys, welcome to that pedal show, VCQ. Uh, Dan here. Mick here. Hello, Sicky Mickey here. Sicky Mickey. Unfortunately. Yeah, not very, not very well. Yeah, for anyone who says, oh, man flu, I know all about that. Uh, fair enough. <laughs> yes, yes. Two days in bed, Daniel. Yeah, two I know, days I'm in bed. Bit, so uh, uh, I, I'm a little bit. I, I am a bit concerned. Weep with I'm, me. Yes, I'm, weep with me, people. I'm, you know, you've you've been overdoing it. Yes, you've been burning the candle at every end. Yes, and the middle and the <laughs> middle end bits, and they're all at once. You're just throwing the bloody candle on the fire. The, put the candle See what on, a, on the best Weber barbecue you've ever seen. Anyway. Okay, so the video we had this week, um, Nick and I went up to Rift Amps and we built a couple of 5e3 Tweed Deluxe style things. Amazing. Chris, thank you very much yes, for that. Yes, thank you, Chris. It was so an what, education. What an experience. And it's been a phenomenally popular video. So this video has had um, more comments than the pedal board build we did for, for Pete Henre. Danish Pete, Danish wow. Pete. Like On half had, as many views. On half as many views. It's yeah. like... 900 comments already wow it's it's incredible so uh what was really interesting we had so many people um commenting who've either made their own 5e3 or are planning on doing it very soon yeah including uh uh abram treadwell southwest kitty kitty it uh dreezy flopalopagus marker reed bob smith ron shepherd and andy w5150 um I, I like that that's very good uh but yeah and other people who yeah, like, so it's, I'm doing people. this right now, you know. Um, yeah, it's very, very interesting. Very cool. Um, and the other people who are asking for specific details on the amp building course that we did, you need to contact Rift Amps directly. Yeah, contact Chris for all of that. Yeah. Details. Some details will be on his website, but you may need to just ask him the question directly or send him an email or something like that. Yes, yes. Right, cool. Rebob9, Old Beer, Sam Popkins, Perilous Temple, uh, amongst others. We're asking about swapping six V sixes for six L sixes, yes, and wondering if what the difference would be and what the wattage and all that stuff would be. Because the way Chris has spec'd that particular build, mm -hmm. the um, mains transformer and the output transformer are both spec'd high enough to enable uh, just a straight swap for six L sixes as long as yep. you change the rectifier, right? That's exactly right. So you need the transformers need to be able to handle it. The the mains transformer, the power transformer, has to be able to deliver the extra current that the larger valves need. Yep. If you don't have that, then you know it's it's um it the valves aren't gonna work anyway. Yeah. But they might get a nasty chest infection and not the, work properly exactly, for, uh, exactly. for a few days. But the thing is, or indeed, ever again, it, Daniel. It, <laughs> so, um, just move it yeah. so if it's okay, I'm not infectious anymore. We we think. Yeah. Um, if the what if you create uh, or have enough power on tap for the six L sixes, then you need to be able to deliver that power to the output transformer. So that has to be big enough, and then the speaker needs to be able to handle that, uh, and then you could kind of a different amp. Yeah, you know, well, we get that's the next thing we're going to do, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. So it's it, but it, it it's an interesting thing. The the power difference, though. I mean, if you think of what a two six L six amp can deliver, um, you know, it's, it's you can get fifty watts out of that stuff. But it's you know, you won't by changing just the valves alone. You're not going to achieve anything like that. I've got a lazy JJ twenty which has the six L sixes in, and that thing's knocking on is it 18 watts you know around there 18 watts 20 watts so but again as soon as you change that spec you're drifting further and further away yeah, yeah from yeah. the the 5e3 I, i'm looking forward to sticking a lower um gain preamp tube in there 5751 or something yep. a couple of 6 or sixes and a higher powered speaker and i think we're both going to like it a lot more okay yeah cool nice Right. Uh, Terry Brookshire, Adam Meislick, Meislick, Harry Burke and Ken Snedden. What are the songs playing in the background? <laughs> um, Mick and I went to Real World Studios and we did a couple of songs and we were looking at the Ox so we, uh, and they're the songs that we did. Yeah, with Universal Audio, they kind of facilitated the whole thing and we made those two songs. They are available at thatpedalshowstore.com. Also on iTunes, but please don't buy them from there. I'm going to I'm going to be crude down and talk cash. 
Okay. The total money we have made from iTunes is about 160 quid. No way. Yeah, and we've sold hundreds. It's pathetic. So um, anyway, kidding. please buy them from that pedal show store. Okay. Or, wow. Or um, get them from wherever you want. And my heart bleeds for every artist making music today and making no money. Um, a quarter, you know, a, a percentage of a pence hmm. off a track. But it's all right because all artists are rich and they can fly around the world in private jets. Dan, don't you know? Um, anyway, there's uh, Mix Moan for today. Seeing as I am ill. Um, <laughs> Matt Scott, Andrew Harper, Cheddar Kung Pao, hello Dave, uh, and Mitch Lazaroko, Lazorko, all pointed out that Burnt and Blistered was the perfect song for while we were soldering. <laughs> it happened just as the soldering guys come out. I will just say though, uh, not everyone liked the songs. Uh, Jazz Fiona said, fair play for supporting someone's band in the background, but it's totally uninspiring, old school cliche. Brilliant. Cheers, buddy. Awesome. Appreciate it. Well... <laughs> If anyone can be uninspiring old school cliche, it's got to be us, us Dan, right? Yeah, yeah, that's, um, us, that's us. I would say that I did manage to puncture a small hole in the side of my... I was soldering like this, and as I went like that, I went doof, straight into my... So, and it's a pointed soldering iron. It's so a pointed it, soldering iron. It, it burnt and entered. Yeah. At the same time. But not hot, not hot enough to cauterize the wound, and so it also got infected. Yeah. <laughs> it was brilliant. Tom Duckworth and Dan Peabody wanted to know about... Here in the app with different speakers. So yeah, we're going to do that. Definitely do that. And yeah, that's part of the part of our five e three journey. Yes, um, I'm super interested. Celestian apparently have released the thirty five watt Alnico. Have they? Copper, I think it is, or red. Um, so you know you get wow. the, the blue, yeah, yeah. the gold, and the cream. Yeah, they've done one in between the cream. The sorry, they've done one in between the blue and with the gold. gold. Wow, thirty five. That sounds a very promising speaker to me. Obviously, it's going to be expensive because sure. it's an Alnico, but. Um, anyway, interesting. I mean, the yeah. blue is still my favourite speaker uh, of all time. And for uh, for uh, anyone who decides to suggest speakers to try, thank you. We've had lots of suggestions already. Um, only so many years left in life. I apologise for interrupting you, Dan. You're right. saying that the blue is the favourite speaker of all time. Please expand on that thought. But you don't need my permission to, all right? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, okay. Now. <laughs> <laughs> all will become all will become clear. Right, Chris Hepburn says, uh, knowing that you guys like high headroom amps, would the applica would there be an application where you would prefer a small wattage amp like, like the one you made? I thought that's a really interesting question. Certainly, um, for a different texture room recording, that's that's the way that I would. You know, I think of it. Yeah. If I was making a track in this room tomorrow, I would use that over my two rock. Really? Probably. Okay. Because I know that, that actually maybe not in this room. Let me qualify that. In this room, I could use any amp. It'd be fine because mm. it can be loud. You haven't got loads of reflect, We've got real reflection control problems. Over yeah. the, over the but, environment. You know, at home, I think you can get r real life out of a small amp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, a yeah, fairly yeah. sensitive mic. Yep. Um, whereas a big amp, it's so hard to get a big, a big sound from a big amp mm. through that microphone and onto the recording media. Whereas mm. a small amp, I think, especially with a nice sensitive mic and, you know, you get some real life going and yeah, I'm looking forward to doing that actually. I think also with the small amplifier, it, it sort of, it comes preloaded with those frequencies that sit just right. Yeah. And so there's a lot less work to do. Well, it's funny when we had the jam, um, it sort of sounded pretty buzzy and messy in here didn't it all over the place but well funnily enough the next thing William Salisbury SZ Abiga uh, Luke Pierce Chris Mondays 19 Mark Z Ian B Luke Davenport and others they say uh, I can't be alone in wanting to hear you guys jam some more that bit towards the end was mega <laughs> you know referring to the jam that we thank had thank you yeah yeah thank you very much it did turn into a bit of Sweet Home Alabama which we were both <laughs> laughing at as it as it became that but um Yes, but that's, I think, even, uh, you know, being exactly the same amplifiers, but they still, if one person's playing rhythm with it, one person's playing lead, yeah, they yeah. still work. Yeah, I mean, I didn't do too much to the audio. I just turned, when he was playing a solo, I turned him up. When I was turned a solo, I turned me up and vice versa. Yeah. That's it. Didn't didn't do any EQing or anything. Yeah, um, very cool. Yeah, I, also, I can't wait to hear it through the Marshall 412 as well. I think it's going to sound special through that. David Hawkins, do you mean valve amps? Um, David is referring to the fact that British people refer to valves and Americans tend to refer to tubes. 
Um, I deliberately used tube mm. in the title of the video, which I think is what he means. We build a couple oh, of tube I amps. See. Because the vast majority of our views come from the United States. Thank you, USA. And you guys buy the vast majority of merch, which is not to say we don't love everyone else everywhere in the world, but we have to make the Americans be able to understand it. That's right. We don't want to alienate anyone. No, except uh, all the people I've just alienated. But, um, yeah, I try to use the most accessible language possible, even though it might not be uh, British all the time. Very good. Uh, Evan Harris says, excellent videos as always. I know Mick mentioned that he'd like to build a JTM 45 style amp, but Dan, do you have any plans to build another amp yourself? I know you're a big fan of Vox style circuits, so perhaps you could try your hand at one of those. Um, in a word, probably no. Uh, I think one thing that I've come away from that building experience with is that it's, it's an, an art form all unto itself and to get really good at it, takes yeah. years and years and years. Yeah, yeah. I have, you know, I've got a beautiful 61 AC30. I've got some lovely amplifiers. And what I do have is, a, is a, if possible, an even greater appreciation for the skill and the care that, yeah, get, yeah, that, yeah. that they put into making these amplifiers. You know, that's not to say I'll never do it, but I certainly don't have any plans to do any more. I, it's a trade-off, isn't it? It's like, this would be a brilliant thing to do. I was in my basement this morning doing some laundry, Dan. That's, a, that's the kind of thing that happens to me on a Sunday. Right. Um, and I was looking over in the corner of my little basement room where we have our laundry, thinking, amp building table. And I could just put a chassis there, and I could just do a couple of hours every day, or, you know, a couple of hours a week, and, you know... Work on it. Work on it. Yeah. And then I was thinking, hang on a minute. The last time I had a couple of hours spare... <laughs> say. was in about 2015 yeah yep. so it's the idea of building amps is fantastic but what could you do with the with that time otherwise yeah yeah number one for me play the blooming guitar yeah just yeah. don't play the guitar enough anymore yeah right ben lovely gigging all, uh, given all the gigging you guys do in different venues with varying amounts of power um maybe past tense gigging we did used not, to do yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, how do you regulate the voltage and amp the voltage uh, to your amps? Do you use some type of variac between amps and the wall? Does the wall output to the amp need to be consistent? Is it something that it's concerned about? Now, this is a really interesting question. The voltage between venues does drift, go, does go up and down depending on where they are and you know the power grid. And the way that affects the bias in your amplifier is is certainly a factor. Now you think. You know, you can bias your amplifier 5% either way, and it does change the way that the amp works. Well, if you plug into the wall, into the wall and, the, and your voltage is going up and down, it will affect the bias of the amplifier. If you really wanted to get, um, you know, absolutely as consistent as possible, then yes, having something like a power conditioner that, that sets and regulates the voltage, that could be a really good thing to do. And there are, you know, bands that do that. Um, so... It, it just depends how far down that rabbit hole you want to go. I think geography is a big part of this as well, because sure in the UK, um, certainly in recent years, maybe not 30, 40 years ago, but certainly latterly, mm. the UK benefits from a very stable, very consistent, very well managed main supply right, okay. system. Now, it's not true of all venues. Mm. For sure, there are still those sort of brown looking plugs hanging off the walls yep. in some places. But... I would I would say that the majority of places I go these days, it's, you know, whatever BSA or whatever the standards is called, you know, sure. there's a standards that electricians have to work to and it's all regulated and, you know, the chances of you getting somewhere between mains voltage in the UK is supposed to be 240 volts. And what was Chris saying? It could be anything from like 225 to 245, yeah. something like that. Mm -hmm. So you've got uh, a 10% um, swing 10 or 12 percent swing i don't know how it is in the states mm. so i don't know whether it's different there it's less reliable yeah. or i mean i am always amazed you go to a hotel room in the states and you plug something in the wall and it's kind of half falling out and it sparks the and, sort of, yeah just sort of sits there just, yeah, yeah now i guess there's on amps you have a proper ground pin as well mm. but so maybe there's a geographical factor but what he said um anyone who's really really serious about it definitely carries their own power conditioners yeah i've never done it no no but, but that is something that you can look at if you, if you're yeah. if you're finding a, a a fluctuation between the amp the, depending on the input voltage 
if you're finding that's an issue to deal with, then something yeah, like yeah. that. But you know, Furman always used to be the brand, didn't Furman, it? I don't know if they still yeah. are, but um, there's there's a there's a bunch of right. cl- clever things out there. Okay, um, Tony that's... Tony Ledbetter. Oh, I interrupted you again. No, no, I? sorry. Just, I'm saying that's my stomach that you can hear. Oh, right. Because I've I've just come. I was out this morning. Just come from a Josh Smith gig. Um, he's doing a daytime. There we are. Uh, Josh is playing uh, the Bristol. Um, uh, blues festival, jazz and blues festival, blues jazz, jazz blues. Yeah. And uh, I so I went over there to catch the gig before I had to come here, and and I've forgotten to eat. Oh, so well far today. Oh, you so, should have said. Yeah. There's food. It's Sunday, by the way. We're doing this on Sunday, just in case anyone's, because I'm I'm out on a job tomorrow. Um, I just yeah. So anyway, I'm just saying, if you're one, if you're doing the audio, and you're going, what is that sound? That's me. Uh, just, there, are, there are various food items. Oh, I, uh, I shall attack them with fervor. Excellent. Shortly. Post haste. To- Tony Ledbetter. Mick and Dan, would you gig with these amps? To me, it sounds like volume may be an issue. Volume will totally be an issue. You can gig with about six of them, I think. Yeah, I don't know if volume... I don't know if straight out and out volume is the issue. It's headroom for me because yeah. there is no clean available. Or there, there is, should I say, there's not the kind of clean that I need at that volume. But exactly. Yep. <clears throat> so the, the, the flat out overdrive sounds actually pretty quite... is quite pleasing yeah and if it was mic'd easy peasy i mean i know plenty of stages that would never let you play anywhere near that loud mm. but not really for yeah. the way we play yeah um unless it was a very specific type of gig where that's the sound you needed it, exactly if that was the sound that you needed and you could have it on a chair pointing directly at your head while yeah. you've got the drummer blasting away um, you could deal with that but I, i've seen those i've seen those those amps in live situations where with two guitar players, actually the one that I saw, three guitar players comes to mind. Ronnie Wood was plugged into one little amp like that and uh, didn't hear a note he played all night. Yeah. You know, which is a, a desperate shame. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yes. Talking anyway. of amps pointing in your face, I'll share a tangent with you. Jay Maskis. A unit hogging. Dinosaur Junior. I was in New York at the uh, 50th, 60th. It was in 2007, which would have been the 50th, um, 2008, which would have been the 50th anniversary of the Fender Jazzmaster. <laughs> so the 50th anniversary of Dinosaur, of Dinosaur Junior. Junior. No, not <laughs> quite. And uh, I, I saw some amazing things over a couple of days, and we, we went to this club and watched, watched Jay play. He had three full stacks, two plexis, and I think one orange. But anyway, there was three full stacks, six 4x12s, and just so he can hear himself, he stood here playing, and there, probably just further than arm's length, is a Fender Twin pointed at his face. I literally, I walked into the sound check and my knees buckled. Far out. And I like playing loud, so... Bless you, Jay. I think the old um, lug holes sort of probably aren't as effective as they once were. Bone transmission of vibrations at that point, isn't Man, it? Man, it was, it was crazy, crazy loud. Was it the loudest thing you've ever heard? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes, it was the loudest Mine's thing I've the, ever the, heard. The day we went in to see Matt Schofield in that studio, that's the loudest guitars I've ever heard. Right. See, that didn't... I didn't even get a shake, let alone a buckle on that day. Wow. Okay. Okay. Uh... Right. Fewer owls. Fewer owls. Oh. I didn't. So, did did, did you end, know how popular tawny owls are in Britain? N- no. And you can, if you just listen, you can hear them going like, doo, doo, like really? uh, uh, talking to one another. I was coming home from a gig one night, and I th- there were uh, it's like a old stately home, and you're going, past, you know, those massive long fences yeah. that they have. It's driving up. And their owls sat on the posts of this fence. Must have been six of them in a row. Like barn owls, white barn owls. Well, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. they're just Unreal. majestic things. So, so great. What um, wonderful birds owls are. Yeah. Sorry, bit of... Uh, I did have to drive to swim in though. Twitchy, yeah. Which sort of took the shine off the... It's yin and yang, Dan. It is, it is. Everything has its equal and exact opposite. Owl and fowl, isn't it? That's what it is. So, fewer owls <laughs> says, at the end, when Mick is fiddling with Dan's knobs... Really? <laughs> as you... 
As you say, the sound doesn't get louder, just more distorted and maybe even mushy. Is this what you mean by sounds disappearing when you play with a band or turn up for a solo? Which is fitting back into Tony's comment. So yes, that, that's that's the lack of headroom. So your dynamics have gone. Um, you know, there's there's no room to go anywhere. Even Catherine, we were sat there watching the video. She wanted to watch it, and uh, she was saying, "You're turning up. Why isn't the why aren't the numbers on the dB meter going up? Right? Because you're saying you're turning it up." Discussion of headroom there you go. with the wife there. Nice. Uh, Camp Buzzo. Um, this had to be up there as one of the episodes requiring the most editing. Thanks, Simon. Yes, thank you, Simon. Yes, thank you, Simon. Simon is really, really, really good at this kind of stuff. He is. He, um, it's, it's experience is what it is. In the same way, right, I think I, there was a comment in the video where I say, you know, you're not paying for the time it takes for the guy to make the amp and the cost of the components. Mm. You're paying for the 200 times they've got it wrong. Yeah. Or I've the 300 times they've done it before. It. Yeah. Yeah. And you're paying for the expertise and, and the experience. And Ooh. bless him, that's what we don't pay Simon for. <laughs> <laughs> well, funnily enough, Amp Stewart says, does making an amp qualify you in any way at all to be more of your own amp tech for troubleshooting or basic service? I.e., if you wanted to tweak the amp you built, would you know what to do? E.g., e where and how to modify the circuit, which components to swap. Yeah, I'm still largely clueless, if so, I'm honest. Yeah, the it's like um, getting a Meccano set, and you've got instructions, and you know you put it together, you know, or you're building a model, and you're following these really fine instructions. That's brilliant. And at the end, if you follow the instructions, you end up with something that works. But if it doesn't work, if you don't understand yeah, the blocks yeah. that have gone into making it work, then no. However, once you start to understand those blocks and then you can tweak things and get to understand what that, that tweaking is, the sonic differences in those tweakings. Yeah. So, you know, and, and you can start small. For example, changing the bright cap is a really easy mod to do and it makes a massive difference. I am going to do that on our Plexi, wherever it is. Right. Over there somewhere. So building the amps alone, I would say no, it hasn't it necessarily turn us into amp techs um but you know you need to yeah you need to absolutely need to understand what's going on in the, in the parts of the circuit that you're working on yeah i think you'd have to do a few wouldn't you you'd have to do a few things would have to go wrong yep. you'd have to fix them in order to gain that experience absolutely. i think doing it once under the tutelage of someone who's going do that do that yep. do that and the 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 important thing to remember is you're dealing with really high voltages in there and it's dangerous stuff. So I'm not advocating in any way yes. just to get into your amplifier and start messing things around. Not at all. Uh, if you do want to start looking at this stuff, you need to be super, super careful and do it under the watchful eye of someone who does know what they're talking about. It is worth saying that Dan and I had absolutely nothing to do with the HT, the, the, no, the high we, the we high weren't voltage. allowed to turn the apps on. Yep. We had to stand back and, you know... Chris did all that. We Chris did all, did all the that. wiring. Yep. And he did all the, okay, now we're going to turn it on because he has test equipment for that. And also, uh, he is not insured to an, to allow us to do that. Yep. So um, it's very safe from that point of view. Yeah, yeah. I, yep. I wouldn't be very comfortable with that, personally. No. Uh, okay, we had loads of people asking us for it to, us to build a pedal, and that is going to happen, um, but it'll be a really simple circuit. And yeah. maybe that's something that, you know, we can do and we can get you guys involved in as well because working on a pedal is really easy. You're not dealing with really high voltages. Yeah, well, we know. should definitely do that first face that... Um, yes, great, bag great, of first great face call. that George Tripps gave yep. us. So we, we will do that. I feel more confident to do that now. Great, great. Yes. Uh, Matt Gilbert, what's the chord that Mick plays around one minute? I've seen him play it quite a few times and can't quite figure it out. Um, we did this on a VCQ before. Different chord, though. Is it not? Is it? I think so. Isn't it this one? Why is my strat in drop D? Because you rock. That's pretty scary. Is it that chord? Yeah. Is that the same chord we did? I think we've done that one okay, before. Okay, it's an E minor 11 voicing. Uh, so do you want to tell, say the, say what the notes are, Dan? Going okay, from so the, you've got... Going from the thin string? Going from the thin string. <laughs> so you've got yeah, your E, and then you've got the what? No, that's an F sharp. Sorry, I can't, sorry, man. It's really hard he to need, do Yeah, it. he needs like a guitar. Where are we? Right. Right, so you've got the F sharp. Right, that's your nine. You got the D, that's your minor seven. Then you have the A, that's your 
that's your 11, then you've got the G, which is your minor third, the B, which is your fifth, and then the E. I don't know, I, I got really confused looking over on a different <laughs> angle. That was really weird. Okay, so because because I think we've done that chord before, let's do a bonus chord. Okay. Because people seem to like this. I want to do this um, minor seven voicing that I like a lot. Okay, this one here. Is it minor seven? That one there. Right, so, minor seven. What, that's, that, there's your minor seven, all right? And that is your 11. So there's your minor seven. Yeah. And there's your 11. So that's in a minor 11 chord. Okay. Well, it's, it's a minor seven. It's a minor seven plus eleven, because you don't have the minor nine. Right. For it to be a proper minor eleven chord, you need to have the seven, the nine, and the eleven. But because I've got a minor seven plus eleven, so. So A minor eleven to E minor eleven. Well, that would work. Same. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go, nice. More chords each week. If we do it for the next uh, 320 years, we could do every chord. Actually, we'd, so we'd, we'd be, yeah. Somebody good at maths way. will work that out. Okay. The overwhelming majority of people really did love this build video and we thank you very much for all the people who've been positive and lovely and... I, I, I have to make two apologies. <laughs> I, I want to make one apology for my rant last week about price because I think it was misconstrued. Okay. Um, some people got it. Some people got yep. it. Some people understood. I wasn't saying that, that expensive stuff is good and cheap stuff is bad and if you can't afford it, stuff you. I yeah, wasn't yeah, saying yeah, that yeah, yeah. at all. I was saying that we've all been skint and believe me, I have been skint. <laughs> um, but if you care about it and it matters to you and it's more important to you than other things in your life, you'll find a way. If there isn't and it doesn't, that's totally cool too. Yeah, yeah of course. Totally cool too. And the other thing I wanted to add to that was it doesn't matter. None of it matters if you don't have anything to say with these. Sure. And this. Yeah. So it's all a moot point. And I think sometimes we lose sight of that a little bit, and I would like to apologise for losing sight of that every now and again. But, yeah, okay, that's good. That's the first thing I've got to apologise. The second thing I have to apologise for um, is probably letting loose on a couple of people in the comments section for the constructive criticism about the audio. Right. But yeah. this is really interesting. So This is really interesting. I'm going to compare myself to uh, Leonardo da Vinci at this point, Dan. Okay, all right. The, the, you mean the same way that I compared myself to... John Ch Lennon, was it? No, no, Jeff Chet Atkins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Life, yeah. So, you know, or, or Michelangelo. He sat there on his back painting the Blooming Sistine Chapel. Two hands at yeah, once. Yeah. Just going for it. Going for it with all his mates. And then some geezer walks in and goes, yeah, I prefer that... Uh, <laughs> scrawl on the wall over there and uh you know michelangelo in a brief, been, brief moment of losing control he's been working so hard he's made himself ill can't walk properly anymore yeah says eh hey, what's it pointy and throws his hands up in the air was he italian he is now yeah yeah <laughs> he's motorbike racing um <laughs> And uh, so I just had a moment of outpouring of annoyance. And the annoyance was people said, oh, my God, the, cap the whatever you did in the room sounds much better than when you got back into the studio and mic the amps up. And I had a freak out going, why do I even bother? But actually, as I calmed down and we talked about it, mm -hmm. it does, as you were alluding, mm -hmm. present a very interesting question. Very interesting question. So you need to remember... The, the amount of compression and audio processing that goes, when you do even doing a video on like a decent phone, the amount of audio processing that happens in that is immense. Yeah. I've just gone out and filmed with Josh just using the iPhone, right? Because it sounds it, great, doesn't it? And it sounds great. Yeah. And you get, you know, you get an idea, but it doesn't sound like it does in the room. No, it doesn't. So what we do and what you go to great lengths to do is 
to, to get as close to the experience as it, you know, as being in the room. Now, if you're sat there, you're watching the thing on your phone, you know, it's not going to work. But if you put some headphones on, yeah, yeah. you'll be able to hear the detail of what's going on. The, here's the difference. We're not compressing the crap out of everything like that happens on your iPhone. If you listen to someone doing a video uh, a, 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 on their iPhone that's been recorded, just you know, having the phone, especially when it's near the guitar, lots of the times you'll hear the pick of the strings over what's going on with the, yeah, with, the, the amp. With, with the amplified sound. Obviously, you can't hear that now, videos, because we close mic the amplifiers. You hear Although that. some people say they can and through the room mics. It's mad. But I, I, I don't think I've ever heard it. But some people say they can. Anyway, sure. sorry, digression. But even if, even if they do, not to the level that, you know, yeah. that's just to point out what that sort of compression does on the, yes. on the you know, most of the audio equipment well, that you hear within the phones and stuff it, they're recording. It hints, to the, uh, it hints to the ultimate truth about recording guitar. If you want it to sound better, turn it up and turn the bass up. And both of those things start to make it sound really good in isolation. And what yep. you were hearing on the Rift video was um, one of these microphones here, which is an 800 quid condenser mic. I mean, it's an expensive microphone, mm. but it's a shotgun mic and it has a very specific application in TV and film and that. And anyway, um, and it was pointing off axis. So what you were actually hearing was all the reverberation of the room. Mm. You were hearing nothing direct from the amp and you were also hearing a 212 cab. Which underneath had been the table very well broken yeah, in absolutely so it's the ambient sound of the room yep. which, which has got me thinking okay that is interesting because just as that isn't the sound of what's coming out of the amp neither is a close mic on the amp sure and we try really hard not to do that so what you heard in the video was two separate mics mixed and they were both at least six inches back from the grill so not not what you would call close mic mm. plus we've got our room mics in here which is somewhat closer to the sound of of the amp however dan yes i want to do an experiment okay and we'll do a video on this where we use our mic micing technique mm -hmm. i want to put a condenser mic kind of here right in the essentially right, right in front of the camera <laughs> out of the just... camera out of the camera's view but essentially in the middle of the room right and just try that okay just one mic okay I sort of dangled here, just just to get maybe right. It would need to be relatively in the. But are we going to put reflectors in the fire side? with the speakers? Maybe I'm just saying. Okay. One room mic. Right. To see what that sounds like. Okay. And then uh, we'll contrast that with what it sounds like if you do it through an iPhone. And I think there's a super interesting discussion around all of that mm. and around per the perception of of a recorded sound. Um, and I'm quite interested in that. Yeah. Because if it is a waste of time, micing all this stuff up having room mics and me spending hours processing the audio, I want to stop doing it because my life isn't long enough if, sure. it, if it genuinely is a waste of time. A hand on heart, I don't think it is. There's no way it is. I'm willing to ask the question. Yeah. So uh, to it, everyone I freaked out at, uh, my apologies. And uh, I hope um, by going through that experiment, at least, might help put some flesh on the bones of my freak out. Sure. And just to round off my point, the stuff that you're hearing from the condenser mic, it just isn't real. It's just not giving you a proper present a representation of what the things actually sound like. It does sound good though. And yeah, yeah. for you to say, oh, that sounded great. It's like, yeah, it did sound great. It's not really what's going on, but recording wise, that's, that's why the, the condenser mics work so well, yeah, you know? Yeah. So, well, yeah. And of course your ear and brain, are doing a bit of what a condenser mic does. Yeah, you, 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 it's. Yeah, and I guess it's our very, purpose. It's very sophisticated. Our purpose here isn't to make things sound great. It's to give you a, a closer representation of what's going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, something semi-realistic. Yeah, and, and just to to cap that off, which hopefully makes your point, when you first plugged in in that room, it did sound great. But by God, it was bright, wasn't it? Oh. it was impossibly bright. Yeah, yep. which doesn't come through on that. There you go. Because the anyway. Anyway. I think we've said enough about that. I think we've said enough about that. And uh, finally, David Wiry says, I've been analysing the show for a couple of years a now. A couple of years? It, it That's bums, amazing. It bums me out how much Mick interrupts That is Dan. a weird thing to say. He bums talk, me out. He, he talks over him. I he never talk over you. I never I, cut you off. He what were you saying? He, he sometimes... 
gets very impatient and grabby with knobs. I don't and ever grab you. I don't touch you. I don't do anything like that. What the hell are you talking about? I just hope this dynamic is something they've discussed privately. And uh, we don't it discuss was, anything it privately. Was, it was so apparent when Dan was excited about his Transformer and Mick just talked over him. <laughs> All you do is interrupt me. It's the Dan and Mick show. Anyway, see you no. next week.